Matt's going to bring on the screen now what we did two weeks ago, October 18, our first part about heaven. We're talking about the most wonderful place. See it, the brand new place, special prepared place, an unending fellowship, and then perfect peace. Now, I want to pick up with the second part today. And we want to stand and read the Word of God and honor it. So would you take your Bibles and please stand with me. Revelation 21 and verse 6, if you'll follow as we read, we move to different verses here. Revelation 21 and 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving... And the abominable and murderers and whoremongers. And sorcerers and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death. Now we got keep looking for that great city, the holy Jerusalem, heaven. Verse 12. Verse 12 had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, on the west three gates. In the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. 22 through 27. Verse 22. And I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter it anything that defileth. Neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You may be seated. The most wonderful place. Part two. The bus driver and minister stood in line to get into heaven's gate. St. Peter said, uh, you're the bus driver, aren't you? He said, yes, sir. He said, come on in. Your place is over on the hillside. Can you see it from here? That mansion on the hilltop. Well, the minister heard that, and boy, he stood up, you know, he felt good. He, man, he said, if... That old bus driver is going to get that place on the hill over there. Well, just what am I going to get? Well, the minister came and he said, I understand you're a preacher. He said, yes, sir. And he said, well, do you look down in that little valley over there? He says, there's your little shack. He said, no, just wait just a minute. He said, I preach the word of God and help people come to know Jesus and and the uh, old St. Peter said, well, it's like this, bud. He said, when the bus driver drove 
People prayed. But he said, when you preach, they slept. <laughs> well, let's, let's just forget about St. Peter. I'm, I'm waiting to see Jesus, aren't you? We're going to see Jesus. Well, this goes number five now, okay? Are you with me? If you follow two weeks ago, we flashed on the screen earlier. The most wonderful place called heaven is going to be a totally satisfied place. Let me share something with you this morning. I'm not satisfied down here. And you want to know the truth? You're not either. I ain't seen anything about being content. I know Brother Paul was in prison, wasn't he? He was beaten. He said, you need to be content. Remember that? Told there Philippians. That's not what I'm talking about. Brother Paul wasn't totally satisfied down here. Locked in prison. Chains on him. You see. But he was just doing the will of God. He was just promoting the gospel. Wherever he went. Ships. Prison house. It didn't matter. Hungry or cold. He didn't want to be hungry. Surely he didn't. But it didn't matter. Because he knew one day he's looking for a city. Whose builder is God. He would be satisfied then. But look in verse uh, 6 here. Revelation 21, 6. He said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Whatever Jesus starts, whatever he begins, what's going to happen? He's going to end it. He's going to fix it just like he wants it. He's going to be perfectly, totally satisfied when he fixes it. Isn't that a good thing? And so the place he's prepared for us who love him and trust him, it's going to be a perfect, totally satisfied place. Look at the citizens of heaven, how they're going to be taken care of. I will give unto them that is a thirst of the fountain of life, water of life freely. In John's day, the Apostle John, as he wrote, and others of that period of history, water was a great concern, as in even in some places of the world today. Those who worked in the Roman mines knew the meaning of thirst. You and I know the meaning of thirst when you work or play or travel. Get dry and thirsty. But one day, we're going to be satisfied. Completely satisfied. But down here, it's not. We fail, man fail, we sinned. And we'll continue on until he calls us home. We'll be somewhat dissatisfied. But in that new heaven and new earth, in that glorious city of God, the garden's going to be restored and renewed and the living water will flow freely. We'll be satisfied. I found a story this week, it's so, so wonderful and powerful in my life as I read it and I'll just kind of shorten it somewhat. Dwight Moody, his little book called Heaven. He's a great preacher of yesteryear. I call it, It's Better Higher Up. He said years ago, there was this poor bedridden saint in London, England. She, there was a missionary lady there who visited her and came to know her. He wanted others to meet this encouraging lady, so... She knew of a wealthy lady nearby and who always complained and focused on herself, you know. She had everything she wanted here. She thought she was uh, really satisfied. She had everything, you see. She said, I want you to come to see this poor bedridden Christian lady. Oh, I don't need to do that. So she asked her several times. She said, well, let's go. I'll go with you. They found the place where the little lady lived. Up the first flight of stairs. It's not clean, kind of dark and dim, just looked like a horrible place. And the Christian lady smiled, the missionary lady said, it's better higher up. Second flight of stairs, still dark and dim, the lady complained, the rich lady did, and the missionary lady said, it is better higher up. Third flight of stairs, no lighter. Came to the fifth floor and she opened the door. It's a beautiful room. Carpeted, plants in the window, little birds singing. 
But there on the deer was that dear bedridden lady, Christian. She was smiling. The wealthy lady was just overwhelmed by her just the presence. She says, it's, it must be very hard for you down here and you suffer like this. And the dear saint said, it's a very small thing. It's not very hard here. But it's better higher up. Down here, friends, you're going to have a lot of disappointments. Things are not going to go well. Sometimes it won't be just right, but you just wait. We're going to be perfectly satisfied, totally, higher up when you see Jesus and you rejoice in that eternal home that he's prepared. Not only is it going to be a totally satisfied place, number six, it's going to be a completely pure place. Completely pure. Holy, cleansed, nothing enters it that defiles it. Now I want you to listen carefully. Those who will be listening by the website, I want you to listen carefully to the words, what it says. We can all be included in here. If you're outside of Jesus, this is what's going to happen. We're not going to reside there. Who's not going to reside there? Fearful. Well, you say, oh my goodness, I'm afraid of heights. It has nothing to do with heights. Nothing to do with cliffs. Flying in a plane. That's not what he's talking about. Not all the phobias of our present day. It doesn't speak about those who fear the Lord. Now, I guarantee you, if you don't fear the Lord, have great reverence and honor and awe of God, you're not going in. It means cowards. That's what it means. Cowardly. You won't confess Jesus as Lord. Not acknowledge Him. Won't stand up for Him. Are you standing up for Jesus? Then it says, the unbelieving. I hate to tell you, friends, there's a lot of unbelievers today. You you think people say, well, I believe in God. Well, which God? Is the God through Jesus Christ? Is the Word of God tells us? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man enter. But wow. But by me, Jesus, Jesus said that, John 14 and 6. They just won't believe. Abominable, that's the word depraved, detestable, unclean, murderers, those who kill, whoremongers, all sexually immoral, all now, fornicators, adulterers, homosexuals, pornographers, molesters, Just go down the whole list. Sorcerers. Practice witchcraft. Idolaters. Idols. False gods. But you say, I don't have idols at home, preacher. I I would never set up something in my room to bow down and worship. I didn't say that. Anything that we devote ourselves to above God, what is it? An idol. It's a false god. Then liars, knowingly pass untruths and bear false witness. It's sad. I hate to tell you this today, but that's eternal separation from a holy God in the place called hell. It says, it burneth, the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone is hell. But I got good news for you. I'm looking for that city. A glorious place. And all these I've just named can be there. Did you know that? Such were some of you and me. Once I unbelieved, I didn't know about believing in Jesus. What it meant to believe. I was fearful to say, oh, I'm a Christian. I stand for Jesus as Savior Lord. I didn't do that. We're all in it. Until we come To hear the good news. The pure God, the perfect God, 
He's a merciful, forgiving God, isn't he? He gave his son Jesus. Jesus saves. He transforms. Oh, I think of the story of the young man in California. He was dying. His friend said, look, you need to go down the street. And you go in there. And you speak to the pastor or you speak to some of the people and they'll help you. They will. Well, it came to the time of prayer in the, in the service order. And the pastor got up and he opened his Bible to Psalm 103. He wasn't preaching on Psalm 103. He just read the psalm so he could have prayer. If you know about Psalm 103, you want to not jot that down, you, you ought to do that. I'm not reading it for you today. Maybe you ought to take it apart this week, four or five verses a day. It would be great. And you see about the greatness of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. Well, we heard the pastor do that, and the pastor preached on his regular preaching. End of the service, the young man said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. Told him about his immoral life. He was a homosexual, dying of AIDS, had no hope. He said, Preacher, when you read Psalm 103, I asked the Lord, is there any hope for me? You know what the pastor told him, don't you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He told him the good news of Jesus, the blessed gospel. Jesus died on the cross, just like he died for me. He died for you, shed his blood, was buried, third day rose again. He lives and he's calling you to repent, to turn, change your mind and your heart. Turn to the Savior. And by faith he trusted Christ. He began to read the Bible. Several weeks later he baptized him. Several weeks later he died. Coming to that glorious place, pure place of heaven. Once he was lost, now he's found. Once you can be immoral, now moral. Once unclean, now perfectly pure. Once ready to burst the gate of hell, now you're ready to step into the gate of heaven through Jesus. It's wonderful to know your sins are forgiven. To have the pardon of the judge of the whole universe... To, to say to me and to you, you're not guilty. The sentence is counseled. He's the king. No longer condemned. Apostle Paul talked to the Corinthians. They had a troubled time. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11 about the unrighteous not inheriting in the kingdom of God. He said, but such were some of you. That you were washed, that's cleansed, forgiven, sanctified, set apart, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. Isn't that a beautiful thing today? Listen, friends, I'm not so much concerned about where you are right now, but I'm concerned about where you're going to be. Understand? You've walked in here today. Some of you have been members maybe 30 years and you're having great trials in your life. I don't know what it is. But I'm saying this. Jesus Christ can change your life. Amen? He wants to. He wants to forgive you. You can come into the pure, perfect place called heaven. As we think of this old earth, we manufacture things down here, sell them in markets. You hear things said 98 some percent pure. I looked at the hand sanitizer one day. There's, there are different kinds, you know. And I think he said 99.9 percent. I said, dog, wonder why they didn't put 100 percent. That's right on it, isn't it? I mean, that's just a very little tenth. It's not perfect. I don't care how many times you wash your hands, how many times you put soap on it. You step out that door, somebody can hit you. We're down here, we 
are in an impure place, but not in the glorious heaven where God dwells. It's all going to be clean. It's all going to be pure. He loves you. Number seven today, the most wonderful place. It's an incomparably beautiful place. Incomparably beautiful. In verse 10, we didn't read that. He carried me away into the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. You think about a diamond? Ladies, looked at your diamond lately? If you have a special, special piece or... Uh, that you can focus on it. You can see it sparkling inside. That's how it's going to be. It's going to shine. So beautiful. And check out the gates in 12 gates. Brother Dr. Bruce Dunn in his little booklet about heaven talks about the city of God will honor both the church and Israel. Where do you, where do you find that? Well, look in verse 12. Honors Israel, the 12 gates. Verse 14, 12 foundations, the 12 apostles, the church. Isn't that a beautiful picture? It's a real place, real people, valuable materials. Verse 18 and following, the walls of Jasper, city of pure gold, clear as glass. The pearls in verse 21. You ladies got some special pearls today? Any, any lady would be happy to get a pearl, the real thing. But on that day in heaven, we're going to enter through a gate of pearl. The whole thing will be pearl. A beautiful gate. Then we'll look for the pearl of great price, our Lord Jesus. Streets of gold. Men do anything down for here for gold, don't they? Cheat, lie, shoot. That's exactly right. Thank God when you get to heaven, you don't have to fight over it. You don't have to worship it. You don't have to go grab a pound of it. What does it feel like? You walk on it. Just enjoy it. It just It's a normal everyday attraction. We'll praise the true Lamb of God. Some years ago, I found about the largest palace in the world. It's in Brunei near Malaysia. Those who were, were here during the... A missionary at times we had one who was working in the country of Malaysia southwest of the Philippines I didn't get to ask him about this had he ever been near this area 1788 rooms chandeliers of gold and silver and diamonds buildings plated with gold a 4,000 seat banquet room I said, what a beautiful palace. It must be there. Precious stones. But I thought about it. That's an earthly place made by man. And it's going to be dissolved. It's going to go away. But not the glorious palace, the house of heaven. No, sir. It's the building of God. By God. Not made with our hands. Eternal in the heavens. In the most wonderful place, number eight, is going to be a great big place. Verses 15 through 17. It's going to be a perfect cube. See that? 16, four square, length as large as breadth. Length, breadth, and height equal. In verse 16. Some say it's estimated to be 1,400, 1,500 square miles. That's 12,000 furlongs in the holy city. So if today we go, go into Jacksonville, Florida, for example, go up to New York, north, cross to Minneapolis, Minnesota, down to Galveston, Texas, across back to Jacksonville, it's almost like a perfect cube. That's a pretty big place, isn't it? Anyway, I don't know exactly what size it looks like. 
That's our human just imagination to figure out 1,500 miles square. But it's pretty great and big, isn't it? Just remember, it's big enough for you and me and all those who come to Jesus. Trust Him. Number nine, the most wonderful place will be an absolutely perfect place. Revelation 21, 22 through 27. Several years ago, a young lady, I, I, I don't know if I married them by myself. Time goes by. But anyway, I was involved in a marriage. and They were to be stationed in Hawaii. And they were so excited. We're going to land of paradise, you know. If I can just get to Hawaii, that's the most perfect place. Beautiful beaches. Just everything. So after about a month, I found out, and I said, well, how's it going out there? And she said, I want to come home. <laughs> Friends, you're not going to find the perfect place. You can visit it. It looks beautiful for a while. You have the same problems, same trials and families. Sickness, death happens on the perfect place we think down here. But there is no perfect place here. Not here. So don't go trying to find it. Go visit beautiful places. I, I'd love to go to Hawaii for a few days. Then I'd like to fly back home. But you just wait. Verse 22. There's no temple there. You see that? The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. You know down here in the sanctuaries... In church buildings, uh, like the temple was there in Jerusalem, we tried to localize God, not in heaven. Can't just put him in one little place. We have access to our gracious Lord anytime. Because shine with perfect light. Look at verse 23. Who is the light? The glory of God will lighten and the Lamb is the light. Christ, Jesus. I don't know, I don't like to dark, walk in dark areas, in alleyways. Shadows are sometimes cast. Don't like it. Can't see what's down there. Not in our perfect heaven. Someone's shining. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We sang that earlier. The light of the world. Same light that shined from Jesus' face at the transfiguration there on that mountain. It's going to light up the glorious city of heaven. Perfect honor. See, people are from around the world. Look here. It says, verse 24, And the nations of them which are saved. The people that have come to Christ and have bowed their hearts and lives to Christ. Not bowing before earthly kings. No more. No ruler, no earthly president, no earthly king, no prime ministers down here should be bowed to. There's only one to be honored. Only one worthy. One day nations and the people of those nations who are saved will know a different king because he's coming down as king of kings, lord of lords. He's going to shine forth. It's be a glorious picture. No more darkness. As we worship the Son, the true King of all. Be perfect righteousness. Verse 27, nothing that defiles. Profane, unclean, abominations, detestable, lies. Only those found in the Lamb's book of life. Let me ask you a question. I know the Bible says in Revelation there, it says that great white throne judgment, you're going to open the books. Then he opens that one book, the Lamb's Book of Life. All those other books means death, separation, put away from God forever in the place called hell. Are you in the Lamb's book of life? 
There's only one that can get you there. It's not your pastor. It's not your family member who's a Christian. It's not the greatest person you ever walked by or shook their hands. It's Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Savior. And God's people will inhabit God's holy heavenly city in that day. What a beautiful picture. Are you going to that most wonderful place called heaven? This was taken from a person who wrote about it. It listed Billy Graham. So that's why I'll tell you that to begin with. I'm not going to heaven because I preach to great crowds. I'm going because Christ died on the cross. None of us are going to heaven because we're good. We're not going because we've worked. We're not going because we even pray. We're going to heaven because of what Christ did on the cross. What I have to do is receive Him. You see, no one's worthy to make it to heaven on your own. I didn't, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life. And I'm so thankful Billy Graham preached to millions of people, shared the gospel. I'm glad I've been able to preach and teach through the years. That's not getting you to heaven. I'm glad for all those who lead music and sing, those who teach children. It's wonderful, but you can't earn your way. You can't buy it. It's not your power, it's not your position, it's not your possession. We have a problem. It's called sin nature. Go back to the garden. God said, if you eat of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall die. Separated. And he gave the laws, the commands, and we've broken them. In word, in deed, in thought. That's what Jesus says. He said, well, I haven't killed anybody, Jesus. Jesus said, had anger in your heart, didn't you? You want that person destroyed, didn't you? See, it's in your mind. That's why we're sinners. You can't escape it. You can't run from it. Just turn it over to Christ. He paid the price. Jesus came as God's grace gift. Perfect sacrifice for our sin. You can't pay the debt. I can't pay the debt. He died a death that we should have died. He shed blood that we should have shed. So why? We can be forgiven. Come to Christ. His call goes forth. What is the call of conviction? What is the Spirit of God telling you? Showing you in His Word? Repent. We realize we're sinners. You must turn. Turn from yourself and turn to Christ at the cross. He was buried and on the third day He arose to give victory. Give us life forever. Eternal life. Do you believe it? Then you confess. It's personal confession. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9. Then you need to public. You need to stand for That's what we do here. People can be saved anywhere. People can come to Jesus anywhere. We just say we want to stand publicly, confess Christ before others. Jesus talked about confessing Him before others. I can be in a store today and someone comes to Christ and they say, Can I tell you what's happened to me? That's confessing to others. 
And you want to follow through in believer's baptism. Those who believe in Christ follow in baptism. Then you live for Jesus. No longer to be servants of sin, we serve Christ. We have a new master now, a new Lord. Come to Christ. Church membership. Those who believe in Christ, trust Christ, live for Christ, they need to come into his body, the church, and live for him and serve him through the body of Christ. Then today you may need, be, need to just personally examine your life. A am I ready to go to heaven? Have I come to Jesus? Am I living for Jesus? Lord, I need forgiveness for I've failed Jesus many times. Doesn't mean you're not saved. Do something inside of me by your Holy Spirit. Awaken me. Change me. Call upon him in prayer. Let's pray together as we get ready for this invitation. Father God, thank you for these moments of your word and we thank you for the glories of heaven. It's the most wonderful place. And Father, you said to come into your Lamb's book of life. It comes through Jesus. He's the perfect Lamb, the perfect sacrifice. We can't get there any way, other way, but through Him. Convict us, challenge us, change us by the power of your Spirit. Speak to every life in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.